Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Teeth. Today we'll be studying angles classification. Angles classification was given by Edward Hartley Angle in 1899. Edward Hartley Angle was interested in prosthodontics and he was teaching prosthodontics in Minnesota and Pennsylvania. While studying the occlusion of dentures there, he came up with the idea of the classification of the malocclusion, which can be applied to the permanent teeth. Angle was a person who coined the term malocclusion to show the uh, to show the different positions of the uh, teeth, teeth which are not normal. This is one of the basic and the revolutionary classifications in history, which revolutionized uh, the classification system. His classification was uh, based on the position of the maxillary first permanent molar, and he classified malocclusion into four main classes. Before coming to malocclusion, let's see what angle described occlusion as. We described normal occlusion as evenly placed of roads arranged in a graceful curve with harmony between upper and the lower arch. These are the two images which Angle used in his article to describe a normal occlusion. You can see he has marked the position of the maxillary upper first permanent molar and the mandibular first permanent molar and apart from that canines also. So these are the four classes of occlusion which Angle gave. He described normal occlusion, class 1 occlusion, class 2 malocclusion and class 3 malocclusion. So these classification systems which we will be studying one by one. First coming to normal occlusion, Angle described three characters of a normal occlusion. First the no there will be normal anterior posterior relationship between maxilla and the mandible. In a normal individual the maxilla is slightly forwardly placed as compared to the mandible. So there will be normal anterior posterior relationship between the maxilla and the ma mandible. Then there will be normal molar relationship. So what is a normal molar relationship? As you can see here, normal molar relationship, the mesiobuccal cusp of the upper first permanent molar occludes in the buccal group of the mandibular first permanent molar. So normal occlusion will have normal molar relationship that is class uh, 1 molar relationship which we call and then the line of occlusion is smooth curve okay so here we can see the maxillary first permanent molar mesiobuccal cusp occluding with the buccal group of the mandibular first permanent molar this was the image used by the angle to describe the molar relationship and talking about line of occlusion is very important angle described that if we draw a line or just place a wire over the occlusal surfaces of the occlusal surface of the posteriors and the incisal surface of the anterior it should be in a smooth curve which he called as line of occlusion and if this if there is no smooth curve it will be classified as malocclusion so in malocclusions we will not have smooth curve so what is class 1 malocclusion class 1 malocclusion is a malocclusion in which the molar relationship will be normal that is the mesiobuccal cusp of upper first permanent molar will be occluding in the buccal group the mandibular lower first molar but there will be either crowding rotations or the teeth are not in their proper proper position or we can say the teeth are crooked Usually what we have in these type of occlusions, there will be normal mode relationship and normal skeletal relationship. But the line of occlusion is irregular or deranged. Line of occlusion is irregular or deranged. So this is a class, classical example of class 1 malocclusion. In this case, you can see in this pic, the mandible, the maxillary first molar, the, the mesiobuccal cusp of maxillary first molar occludes in the buccal groove of the mandible first molar. So it's a normal molar relationship, but you can see this canine has canine has rotated. There is anterior crowding. The upper uh, lateral is placed palatally. So this will be classified as angles class one malocclusion. This type of malocclusions are seen in 60 to 70 percent of the all the malocclusions which are seen. And the features are they have normal skeletal relationships. They have normal muscle function. But they may exhibit irregularities such as crowding, spacing, rotations, or the teeth will not be in their proper position. 
which is also known as intra arch malocclusion they can be single tooth malocclusions or multiple tooth malocclusions and one more type of malocclusion which is often characterized under this is class 1 bimax protrusion so this is a so what is a bimax protrusion bimax protrusion is that entire dentition is forwardly placed the molar relationship will be class 1 the canine relationship will be class 1 but the upper and the lower teeth will be proclined so the no overjet is usually overjet and overbite is normal so we have talked here about the canine relationship canine rela what is class 1 canine relationship canine class 1 canine relationship is that the mesial slope the mesial incline of the upper canine occludes with the distal slope of the mandibular canine or you can say the incisal tip of the maxillary canine occludes in the embrasure between the lower canine and lower premolar. So bimax protrusion is molar relation will be class 1, canine relation will be class 1, but the anterior teeth will be proclined. So the overjet and overbite can be normal, but usually they show spacing between the teeth. So, what are the extraoral and the intraoral features of such a uh, patient? First, coming to the facial form, facial form will be mesoprosopic, that will, it will be average face. Then, coming to facial profile, it will be straight or convex. How we see facial profile? Facial profile can either be seen clinically or it can be seen taking a lateral view of the patient. This is a lateral view of the patient and marking three points glabla, soft tissue glabla soft tissue point A, deepest point and soft tissue chin or pobonia. Then you join these three points and if you get a straight line, it's orthognathic or straight profile or if you get an angular measurement like convex, okay, like this angle you get convex. So this is a convex profile. So usually what we see, the class 1 more relationship malocclusions have straight orthognathic or slightly convex profile. Facial divergence. In facial divergence, you join the soft tissue glabula and the soft tissue chin or the soft tissue pogonial. So, if this line only two points to join, this line is uh, straight. It will be uh, usually it will be straight in the class one uh, malocclusion, and uh, it can be anterior divergence or posterior divergence depending on the malocclusion, which we'll be studying in the coming slides. So coming to nasal label angle, how nasal label angle is formed? You just draw a ten tangent to the base of the nose, like this, and you just draw a tangent on the lip and measure the angle. So this angle is nasal label angle. Usually it's 90 to 110. Normal is 190 to 110. Lips are competent. That is while the patient is in rest, you ask the patient to. Uh, say MMM or Mississippi Mississippi and once the patient comes to rest his teeth his sorry his lips will be covering his teeth or there can be one to two mm space between the lips which is considered as normal so you can see everything is normal so you can see everything is normal extra orally but intra orally the patient will have the molar relationship will be class 1 the canine relationship will be class 1 as described what is class 1 canine relationship the incisor classification will be class 1 this was given this was uh, given by ballard and Weyma, wayman and it was then uh, you know adopted by the british society uh, also known as british standard uh, classification in this classification is based on the incisor relationship of the upper and lower what happens the incisal edge of the lower mandibular incisor precludes or is you know below the cingulum uh, but posterior to the upper incisor so this is class 1 incisor relationship so additional features can be spacing crowding rotation missing teeth bimax protrusion or midline diastema